Welcome to Meg's Motorcycle Journey, where we explore the world on two wheels. This channel will follow me on my journey to become a better rider and explore my love of all things motorcycles. Welcome to part two of my Ride Like a Pro training. This is just before the class. You heard Donna introduce herself, and this is me chatting with some of the participants and chatting with Jerry. Um, he's a great guy, a great instructor, but also just a fun, funny guy to be around. So I wanted to include some of that footage. Listen up. We're going to be using three techniques, most important of which is the proper use of your head and eyes. Wherever you turn your head and eyes, that's where the bike will go because your hands will naturally follow your eyes. Whenever you're in an exercise, you must be in the friction zone, slipping the clutch. The clutch should never be all the way out, should never be all the way in. So we're in that gray area, which is usually about an inch wide on most motorcycles, and we're going to be fluctuating the clutch within that one inch. A little more speed, let it out very slightly, a little less speed, bring it in. Don't let the clutch out all the way. I've had so many people tell me that they wanted to take Jerry's class since posting my first video and seeing Jerry's videos that he posted of me, that I thought it might be cool to give you guys an inside look at his class. And he certainly shows a lot of that in his videos, but I felt very fortunate to have the opportunity to come and learn. So the class starts off with him, as you just heard, providing some tips uh, that cover the most important rules of s slow speed maneuvers. He talks for a little bit to give you some background before you actually hop on the bike and start riding. So um, I think there was seven other people in this class. And as a lot of you know, his wife, Donna, does a lot of the demonstrations. And you heard her introduce herself in the beginning. So she was just standing right there. And after that, you get an opportunity to jump on the bike. So I started off, if you've watched Jerry's video of me in the class, you'll know that I started off on his Sportster that is a training bike. So you can see me here doing this. And I do the very first exercise, which is the slow race, which is more difficult than it sounds because the object of the exercise is to go slow enough that someone can walk next to you. And you see Joe walking next to me right there um, while staying on a straight line. And I had gotten the opportunity to do that the day before. So that portion of the class goes fairly quickly. And then you get into this cone weave um, into a U-turn. And so again, you see Donna demonstrating it completely perfectly. And as I mentioned in my last video, uh, she's not only an amazing rider, but an amazing teacher and so very encouraging. So I really enjoyed being trained by both Jerry and Donna. So you can see me in line getting ready to do the cone weave into the U-turn. And as you saw in my video, I had practiced doing this the day before. So I was pretty confident on the sports through this day. And actually, Jerry had had me doing it the day before in a 24-foot space. And I believe this was a 27-foot space. Um, so it was a little bit easier. Here you see cameraman doing the course so you get some perspective of what the course is like if you are actually riding on a bike. So I thought that might be cool to include so some of you could see that. Um, but this exercise is definitely trickier than it looks and you probably saw some people um, hit some cones. So I was told, encouraged by Joe and Jerry to hop on this Road King. I had never been on the Road King, so this was after I had done the cone weave with the Sportster a few times, so you see me trying to figure out how to start it up. Um, this is the second time I had ever been on a touring bike. The day before I rode Donna's other Electroglide, not the blue one you saw her on, but a black one. Um, so this, I believe, is Joe's training bike, his Road King. And 
I was not very comfortable on it, to be honest. When I got on the Electroglide, it felt like home. It felt like the time that I rode, first rode my Lowrider S and I got on it and was like, this bike is awesome and it feels like it fits me and it's amazing. I didn't have the same experience on the Road King. Um, the clutch felt incredibly tight. I was having a hard time finding neutral. Um, and I just felt generally uncomfortable on the bike. But... It's my belief that if I'm going to be an excellent rider, then I should be able to conquer any bike that I get on. I didn't used to think that, but after I rode on the Electric Glide and rode the Sportster and I've rode a number of different bikes, I started to feel like if I'm going to be an excellent rider, I should be able to conquer any bike, whether it feels comfortable or not. So I decided that... I was going to conquer this Road King, whether it was comfortable for me or not. So I did that, and I ended up doing fine on the Road King, even though I didn't feel as comfortable. Um, so I will say that even though the electric glide was more natural, I still felt like I had pretty good control over the Road King. That was the first time that I had ever ridden it, doing that cone reef and that U-turn. So... Um, my practice from the day before clearly helped, but I was determined to conquer this bike one way or another. Um, this is the offset cone weave, which you may or may not have seen from Jerry's video. I did not practice this drill the day before, so this was the first time that I ever did this drill, and it was on a bike that I had been on for a maximum of five minutes and I had trouble figuring out how to start and find neutral. Um, but as you can see, the techniques, when I listen to Jerry and apply the techniques, they work. And I was able to complete that entire drill without much difficulty. You can probably see, I think I'm pretty happy with myself here because I really felt empowered that I could get on a bike that I wasn't familiar with that was, you know, a huge eight, 900 pound bike and perfect these drills. Uh, the other thing I learned, and you can probably see this with me on the Road King um, and also yesterday or the day before in my video part one on the Electroglide, my arms are slightly bent, which is not a posture that I have on my Lowrider S. A number of you have suggested and Jerry actually, after watching my videos, suggested to me that I either get a riser or I put mini apes on my bike so that I have some bend in my arms. Uh, and so I plan on doing that. I've already taken my bike into a shop since I've been home and started to explore my options. And so I will... I. I think I'm going to go with the mini apes, so I will be putting those on, so I will keep you guys updated for that, but I certainly felt a huge difference in my ability to steer the various bikes and my turning radius uh, with bars that were just a bit closer to my body. This is the intersection drill, which I had never done on this bike. Uh, as you can see, all of the riders that started in Jerry's class, some of them had trouble, certainly, with the initial U-turn. By this time in the class, several hours in, everybody has really improved on their skills. So that just speaks to Jerry, Donna, and Joe's methods, that they do work, and that you can see a tremendous improvement. So those of you that have asked me if it's worth it or said you wanted to drive down to Florida and take Jerry's class... I think it's absolutely worth it. You can see out of every single rider that took the class, a tremendous improvement from the beginning to the end of the class. So this is uh, more of me on the White Road King doing the intersection drill, which actually ended up being one of my favorite drills, even though I was really intimidated by it initially. I felt like I was able to get a real groove and um, lean the bike and pick up some speed. And so that was a lot of fun. And I will actually be setting up cones in my work parking lot myself in the coming months uh, to practice this drill on my own bike because I feel like 
it's a tremendously helpful and useful drill for real life riding if you're stopped in an intersection and you need to do a u-turn these are the type of maneuvers you need to be performing and i want to be comfortable doing them on my bike in a parking lot so that i'm comfortable doing them in the real world this was when we started alternating again between the offset cone weave and the intersection drill and again you see how pleased i am with myself because i really felt a tremendous amount of um, satisfaction that I was able to to get on the bike and do that because I would not have necessarily believed myself capable of doing that on such a large bike just you know days before so something else that I mentioned before and this is absolutely the case is that one of the reasons I had the confidence to lean the bike to do these slow speed maneuvers is that there are crash bars on all of Jerry's training bikes and he very clearly told me and you heard this in the last video that if I drop the bike nothing will happen to it they've been dropped hundreds of times and I shouldn't be nervous about dropping the bike I had been reluctant to put any sort of crash bars on my low rider s for a number of reasons one I didn't really think that they looked very cool um, two, I felt like there were other modifications that were more important. And frankly, three, I wanted to think myself a proficient enough rider that I didn't need them. Well, I have 100% changed my mind since being down and taking this class. Um, I learned from Jerry and Donna that no matter how great of a rider you are in some conditions, in some circumstances you're going to have incidences. You are going to have times where if you are pushing yourself to your limits and riding to your fullest potential, that there will be accidents. And instead of putting thousands of dollars of damage on a bike, spend only hundreds of dollars putting some crash bars on the bike. So at the same time that I have my handlebars changed out to mini apes to bring them a little closer i'll be also adding crash bars so here you can see jerry demonstrating on the road king that i was just on uh the intersection drill but he has added a circle on the inside of two of the intersections and that was actually a a pretty challenging exercise i had done it the day before on both the sportster and the electroglide so um here he calls me over puts me on the spot a little bit to come over and try the drill out um and it was raining and i was a bit nervous but you'll see that using his techniques uh in the friction zone foot on the rear brake head and eyes i was able to complete the circle so i hope you guys enjoyed watching me take the class and ride like a pro don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time everybody ride safe thanks a lot for tuning in